and welcome to another episode of Brand Retro. Today on the podcast, we have Scott Aaron, a LinkedIn expert, podcast host, and best-selling author. Scott, how are you? Mike, doing great. Grateful to be here. Thank you very much for being on the podcast. I'm excited uh, to talk with you a little bit today, just primarily because I want to talk about LinkedIn marketing. I want to talk about kind of your approach there. From my experience and with clients that we work with, LinkedIn's a tough one because it's it's different than the other platforms, and I think people are intimidated by it. So that said, what what are your thoughts on that? And Kanye, how do you start that conversation with clients to get them up to speed on, you know, LinkedIn not being that scary? I think any platform is scary when you first start using it. I think anything that we do that's new, there's, uh, you know, an aspect of not knowing what to do and being uncomfortable. I I think that's just the normal human experience. So for people that feel that it's a big undertaking or it's a misnomer or I'm confused, everyone starts at the same place. They always start at not knowing. Just like any other platform, uh, and this is what I always recommend for people, if you were to give any platform and you know, using LinkedIn as the example, 12 to 18 months of consistent use, you'll be an expert. Because once you kind of understand the the nuances of how it works, uh, what drives engagement, what doesn't, what actually is the best ways to use it, uh, as opposed to what is not going to work for your business, you end up not scrolling and trolling. You end up spending very succinct amounts of time on there because I'm all about productivity and you can accomplish everything that you want in 20 to 30 minutes a day. Yeah. One of the things you mentioned there is just the kind of the commitment to, and I think um, I'd like your thoughts on this too, but I think a lot of people jump right in. They expect light switch style results and they just don't give it enough time. Well, I, I second that, that question with how serious are you about your business? Because if you're serious about what you're doing, you'll give things the appropriate time that they take to achieve that goal. It's the same thing. You know, I, I have a background in health and wellness, so I always correlate things to the gym. If you expect to walk into a gym one time, work out, and then walk out looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger after one workout, you are greatly mistaken. The same thing is using a social media platform. If, if you're not going to be patient with the process, and if you're not willing to give it time, then you're not going to get any results. But I think it goes back to that statement is how serious are you about your business? If you're serious about your business, you will do what's required in order to succeed. And leveraging a platform like LinkedIn may be one of those things. Yeah. So what, what, what are the handful of tips and uh, guidance that you give somebody who's, who's looking to venture into that space? So I like to break things down in, in very simple terms. And I call these things, the, the four layers of LinkedIn. So if someone was just, getting started and they're like, Scott, tell me the bare bone basics of of what I need to do. I would start with the first layer, which is optimizing your LinkedIn profile. Just like any other social media platform, what makes LinkedIn different than your Facebook profile page from your Instagram personal feed to your TikTok account, to your YouTube channel, your LinkedIn profile is just like the homepage to a website. So all throughout your LinkedIn profile, it's SEO optimized, or in most cases, not SEO optimized. So if you're not getting consistent profile views, if you're not appearing in searches, and you can see that right on your dashboard, because LinkedIn will show you in your analytics column within your profile, how many searches you've appeared in in the last 30, 60, or 90 days, uh, and how many profile views you've had in the last 30 to 60, 90 days. So if those numbers are glaringly low, then you probably haven't optimized your LinkedIn profile. So what I always suggest people to do is to write down three to five keywords that your ideal target audience would search in order to find you. So whether that's marketing, branding, lead gen, sales, client acquisition, once you nail down those specific keywords, you got to flutter them all throughout your LinkedIn profile, your headline your about section, your experience section, and the description that follows those experiences. So the more SEO optimized your LinkedIn profile is, 
the more visibility it will get to the right types of people. So that's the first layer. The second layer is the actual build of your network. So back in the day, people did this thing called the race to 30,000 connections because that's the maximum amount of connections that you have. You can have unlimited followers. So I have about 27,000 connections, but I have a little over 30,000 followers on the platform. So there's a difference between the two. Your connections are your connections, your followers are your followers. So what people were doing, they were just clicking the connect button, trying to get there as quickly as possible. It's called the spray and pray methodology. It's not going to work because you need to be very clear and targeted with everything that you do on the platform. So what I tell people is there's two types of connections that you should be inviting into your network and accepting on the other end as well. Number one is your ideal client or potential ideal client but it must be done from an industry or professional title only. So for me, that would be business coaches, business consultants, podcasters, speakers, authors, those types of connections are good ideal clients for what we do. But on the flip side of that, the business ally connection is just as important. So relationship marketing on LinkedIn is what's going to lead you to generate more sales on the platform because it's about who you know and who you know and who they're connected to. So you want to make sure that you form these business allies. So for me, it's other coaches, other podcasters, other authors, other speakers. So my ideal client avatar is also my business ally avatar. So you want to make sure that you're very clear with who you're connecting with. And if they don't fit into one of those two buckets, don't send them a connection. And more importantly, don't accept a connection from people outside of that sphere. Now, the third layer is messaging. So this is where things I, I feel start falling apart because if you've spent any time on LinkedIn, you probably at some point received one of those 18 paragraph long drunk log verbal vomit messages from people trying to sell you and pitch you or they're using automated software, which actually violates the user agreement on LinkedIn, which is getting people get, getting kicked off every single day. You have to do things by hand. And if you don't want to, don't go to LinkedIn in the first place. It is an organic platform where they reward people for doing things the right way, not the wrong way. Now, when you are looking to message people, I have a simplistic framework. It's, it's three steps to crafting the perfect message on LinkedIn. Uh, the first step is acknowledging the person as a new connection in a very relaxed way. So a simple start out to that that message could be, hey, Mike, so great to be connected to you. So you're stating the obvious. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to create something called the bridge. And the bridge is the connecting point between you and the person that you're messaging. So you need to create relatability to lower the wall of resistance and raise the level of connection. So Mike and I have a couple different connection points. I would kind of lean on the podcasting connection point. So I would say, you know, I noticed that you had a business focused podcast, as do I would love to hear about it, share more about mine and how we can support each other here on LinkedIn. So it's just very natural, very organic, very free flowing. So when Mike reads that message, he's gonna be like, oh, he's got a business podcast. I have one. That's why he's reaching out. The third and final part is putting a bow on it with including a very clear and specific CTA, a call to action. Questions lead to answers statements lead to nowhere. So you have to ASK to GET. You have to ask in order to get. So I would simply finish that message with, did you have any time this week or next week for a call or a Zoom? The last thing that you want your new connection to see in a message is a question mark because that is a prompt. A prompt will prompt them to respond. If you finish with a period, it's an ending of a sentence, which isn't going to have them engage in a response. Now, now that you're optimizing your profile, you're building your right network, you're messaging people the right way, how do you nurture your network in between all of that? And that's the fourth and final layer, which is the content that you need to create. Now, unlike other social media platforms, on LinkedIn, if you were to post three times a week, uh, either Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you're going to be doing more than 99% of the people on the platform. 1% of the LinkedIn platform is creating at least one piece of content per week. So if you're doing two to three times that, you're way ahead of the curve. Now, in regards to what you need to create, there's three pieces of content that I recommend. One, a piece of video content. 
two, a piece of market research content, and three, a long form educational piece of content. Now, the video could be two to four minutes, just recording yourself on a Zoom and uploading it right to the LinkedIn platform. It could be from your phone in a 60 to 90 second little tip video that you upload right to LinkedIn, but it should be educational and information based. You need to create your content from a solution oriented aspect. People are looking for free solutions. If you are afraid to give free value, again, you should not be on LinkedIn. You have to give in order to get. So the, the number one factor in why people aren't creating sales, not just on LinkedIn, but in business in general, is they're not building the know, like, and trust. People don't buy from people that they don't know, like, and trust. And providing value-added content is one of the quickest way to bridge that gap. Now, the second piece of content is your market research. And you can do that through market research polls on LinkedIn. So what you want to do is you want to create a poll question with specific answers, either yes or no, or more specific answers, that is going to allow you to dig into the specific pain points that your ideal audience is having. So you can be a solution to that. So an example could be, I asked a question to my audience, uh, do you feel that chat GPT or AI in general is helping or hurting content creation? And the answer was hurting it, helping it, other comment below. So just say the wide disparity of people feel that it's hurting content creation. So what I can do is I can combat that on my next piece of content, which is my long form either post up to 3000 characters or a, a LinkedIn article or a newsletter edition if you have one. And I can, I can break down three keys of how you can leverage chat GPT to create better content using your own verbiage and not just the output of an uh, AI tool. So all of it is, is correlated around what can I do to position myself as the expert, the go-to person and a value added resource. And again, Monday video, Wednesday poll, Friday long form, you're good to go. So if someone was to kind of go back and say, okay, I got to optimize my profile, got to build the right kind of network, message organically and create some value added content. If someone was to do that for the next 12 to 18 months, they're going to hit a home run on LinkedIn. So how do you help people frame up their expectations of? So I know like, share, comment, traffic engagement, uh, obviously connections, those are all kind of milestones and measuring sticks along the way. But a lot of people you know, just saying in general, they're looking to get leads. They're looking to get clients. They're looking to get, you know, kind of like you said, that they want to hit home runs on the platform. How do you help them kind of digest and kind of set a realistic expectation as to what success looks like and how they potentially use that to land clients? Yeah, I think it's not setting expectations because I feel that it, I'm not saying don't set goals. It's important to set goals. I'm a big KPI type of person, so key performance indicators. Mm -hmm. So when people are just getting started on LinkedIn, give yourself 90 days of consistency. And within those 90 days, look at your metrics. You know, what, what content is your audience finding most valuable? Are they enjoying your videos most? Are they enjoying your market research polls most? Are they enjoying your long form articles most? And double, triple, quadruple down on that, but also vary your messages. Some messages include a call to action. Some just leave them better without even asking for a call because people don't want to be pitched and sold to. So I think if you don't set any expectations, but you have a goal, and I think the one expectation that people should have, if your number one goal is to just be consistent for the next 90 days, that will lead that into an, a habit, which will create a year to a year and a half of consistencies, then you can start to break down those goals a little bit further. But I think the initial commitment would just being be consistent for 90 days without expecting anything back in return. Yeah. You kind of stole the words from right from my mouth. I, I couldn't agree more in that. I think you can have a broad goal. I think you can have grand expectations beyond a year, year and a half. But I think anybody who's starting from scratch or re-engaging their focus on a platform like LinkedIn, like just get through the first 90 days, develop a pattern. And then if you get that far, then you can say, okay, well, now for the next 90 days, here's what I want to do. Take it in chunks so you don't burn yourself out or kind of lose yourself in the process because 
you're not going to get there anyway if you don't build that pattern. So that's exactly. your first that's your first accomplishment. Um, so it's for me, it's about helping them digest those kind of those mini victories along the way to get to the big victory. Yeah, it's creating the brain tattoo. You know, you want to you want to rinse, wash and repeat things so they become automatic. I don't even have to think about what I do anymore. And that's anything that you start for the, the first time that's brand new. Yeah, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be weird. It's going to be a little bit time consuming in the beginning. But just like anything, it gets easier the more often that you do it. So I go back to something that T. Harv Eker says about the secrets of the millionaire mind. And he talks about that every master was once a disaster. So just expect to suck in the very beginning. And there's only one way to go, and that's up. So again, if you're really bad in the beginning, it's going to be a little bit messy in the middle, and then it's going to be beautiful at the at the end, as, as Robin Sharma says. I totally agree. So from a KPI standpoint, they get past that first 90 days. What should they be looking for? I would say the, the things to really track and measure are the, the rate of acceptances of your connection requests versus how many you're sending. So that's a clear indication that you're connecting with the right people. If you have anywhere between a 25 to 35% acceptance rate, so for every 100 requests that you send, you're getting a 25 to 35 connection acceptance from that, you're doing great. If it's lower than that, reevaluate the target market that you're looking to connect with because there could be a little bit of a disconnect there. The second thing that I would measure is the response to your messages. So if you were sending five messages a day to new connections to seek to book some calls. So I usually tell people for every five messages that you send, it should lead to one appointment booked. So keep things very easy. So for every 25 messages, that should convert to five calls booked. Now, if your numbers are way, way low, like no one's responding, again, take a look at who you're connecting with who you're messaging and how, and change something. Because again, I like to keep things in very, very simple metric measures. And those are two simple things that you can measure KPI wise. The third uh, KPI that you should take a look at is the engagement in your content. Now, this is something that you can look at on a weekly basis. The first two KPIs that I mentioned, the rate of acceptance per 100 connection requests sent, and the rate of messages that turn into calls being booked per every 25 per week. That is something that you want to look at every 30 days. So at the end of every month, you want to go back and look at those. Your content, you want to look at every week because you're going to be creating consistent content each week. So you can go into your LinkedIn dashboard and you can check to see what insights are hitting. So it'll rank your content from best to worst you know, most engagement to least engagement, most insights to less insights. And that will get give you a better depiction of what type of content is my audience enjoying? What do I need to create more of? What do I need to create less of? So I'm always into uh, split testing things. Sometimes I'll do short form videos. Sometimes I'll do long form. W what I have found that has really been helping me so far is actually creating polls in specific groups that I'm in. So I'm in a, a content marketing group. So I did a poll question that literally pushed their pain point button. And I did it around AI. I said, do you guys feel that ChatGPT is hurting the content marketing industry? Yes, no, other comment below. And it's, it's getting great engagement. So it's giving me that necessary market research. So I'm always willing to try new things. But I would say those three simplistic KPIs the connections, the messages, and the content are things that you should look at the first two on a monthly basis, the third one on a weekly basis. Yeah. So keeping in mind uh, the KPIs and obviously trying things and figuring out what works, is there a is there a broad stroke approach to how somebody should position themselves being more conversational versus more robotic being like, I look at a personal brand perspective. So when they're when they're doing these these videos or producing perhaps a, the written word, should it be more more authentic and more organic, or should it be more polished and like talking head videos? Like what what should somebody consider in that process? Yeah, talking head videos are great because it's it's hard to make that up because if it's you speaking, it's you speaking. So people want to feel connected to the person that they're engaging with. And that's also why I tell people when they're ready for some more advanced tactics that they can leverage LinkedIn Live, which you can use either StreamYard or Restream. 
And when you're doing a live training, it's hard to hide behind the fact that it's a live video because it's you talking directly to an audience in real time. I do two of those a week and it's so much fun because it allows me to create connection with my audience because they can ask me real time questions. Uh, I can engage back with them. I can give them real world tips. I can share my screen and hop on the LinkedIn and show them more clearly about where something is. So I would say the more humanizing you make your content, the more real world and real life you make your content, the more connectable it is, which means the more relatable you'll be to your audience. Excellent. So if I was somebody who was putting together a plan and a cadence for this, just to kind of recap a lot of the different things you've said, you know, a first step for me might be just to map out my cadence, my content, start just kind of generating it and set, you know, set an evaluation point or a calibration point for 90 days out and just check in with yourself at that point. Um, just to kind of keep it simple, because I think, again, I think it, I think LinkedIn's just scarier than other platforms for people. And I think the idea of committing to something is, is always scary, but how you're breaking it down and obviously your wealth of knowledge on this. So I appreciate it, but how you're breaking it down, you're making it sound very simple. And I think it is, I think it's just a matter it is simple. of, yeah, I think it's just a matter of somebody kind of looking at it like that. Just do it. I mean, a anything is scary that you don't know about. So again, I, I want to kind of turn that page for people to have them lean into the uncomfortable. So I'll, I'll say this, there, there's two different mindsets and two different approaches that you can have when it comes to anything in business. You can have the fixed mindset approach or the growth mindset approach. So the fixed mindset approach says, I'm staying comfortable where I am. I'm not willing to change or move in a different direction. And I'm just going to press that easy button. The growth mindset approach is like, all right, bring it on. Give me a challenge. Let me get uncomfortable. Let me see what's on the other side of that. Because New doors create new openings to opportunities. So if it's something that's scaring you, that means you're on the right path to something bigger. So none of us were, were created for mediocrity. We were created for greatness. So you just it's a mindset switch going from fixed to growth. And again, if you think about just those two terms right there, fixed is stationary. We're not a tree, just move. So go to that growth mindset where we can grow, expand, and take our business to new heights. Yeah. Well said. So last question, are there any unique tips and tricks or any things that you can share that people could try? Like, is it a, like, if I want to share that talking head video, is it better to share it from YouTube? Do I post it natively? Are there any kind of flow, like content flow tips and, and tricks that people should, should utilize? Natively is always best just because um, like any other social media platform, I, I would say most closely related to that is Facebook. You're going to get less engagement for a YouTube video link that is then posted on Facebook because like any social media platform, they don't want you leaving the platform and going somewhere else. They want you staying on there. So if you're going to do a talking head video, as long as it's under 10 minutes, you can directly upload it late to, right to LinkedIn. So that's why if you want to, if you have a little bit more to say, that's why I would suggest doing a LinkedIn live if it's going to go over 10 minutes. But uh, there's a, a tool that I use called Opus.pro, great automation tool for video breakdown. So you can record like a 10 minute video, uh, just you on Zoom. You can drag the MP4, MP4 file right into Opus and it'll, it'll break it down into like 10 mini viral clips anywhere between 30 seconds to 90 seconds, uh, which you can just download to your desktop. And then just basically upload it late to LinkedIn. I would say that's the best thing to do. Use the platform as organically as possible, but video is still king. It's the best way to build that know, like, and trust and that relatability because they can see you, feel you, and hear you. So I would start with some short form, you know, very like the mini clips that are captioned, make it very engaging, light, interesting, educational, information based, and value added. And you'll grow your network organically from there. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, Scott, where can we learn more information about you? I know you have a podcast. Kind of tell us where we can track and kind of find more information from you. Yeah, it was grateful to have you on the show. Uh, my podcast is called Networking and Marketing Made Simple. It's on all major platforms. I uh, would love your support with that. Uh, again, you can find me on LinkedIn, obviously. That's one of the best platforms to find me on. 
And my website is scotterron.net if anyone's interested in learning about some of the programs, products, services that I offer in regards to helping you grow your business using LinkedIn. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Mike. If you'd like to learn more about CyberDogs, share your thoughts, or even ask a specific question about this episode and or the brand retro mindset, contact me directly at mike at cyberdogsmarketing.com.